Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today episode 15 of the Necromunda project I'm going to be doing something very special for you guys I'm going to be doing a terrain challenge That's right, I'm going to be doing a terrain challenge with Lee from Tabletop Skirmish Games Now, if you don't know who Lee is, which would surprise me Go check out his channel, it is awesome I will leave a link in the description down below He has fantastic how to play videos He covers everything of latest news anything Warcry related, 40k, Age of Sigmar, so many other games, be sure to check it out. He just did a complete uh, entire series on how to play 40k, the 9th edition, very comprehensive, his explanation is fantastic. He is also the creator of Weekend Warriors, a tabletop skirmish game that you can play with your kids at home. It is awesome. I also have the book I will show you right now. So this is my copy of the book Weekend Warriors, the ultimate tabletop skirmish game to play with your kids and Lee created this all by himself. Now it is a fantastic book full of awesome content and I'm not even going to begin to cover all of it, but trust me it is great. Now I've played several games and I had loads of fun with them. You can use whatever you want for models and design the game the way you prefer. Now it is very easy for beginners, but it can also be very challenging for the more experienced players, so be sure to check out his how to play videos, it will show you step by step on how to play the game. Very comprehensive, the layout is great, and yeah, you can make it as easy as you want or as hard as you want, there's something in it for everybody. Now for this challenge we decided to uh, base our terrain challenge around uh, some old piece of electronics. And I've used this CD player that you will see on screen right now. And here is my old CD player, which I will utterly destroy for this project. <laughs> I'm going to be demolishing this piece to make this a chaos infused generator for Necromunda. As I love chaos and I really want to import them and implement them in my Necromunda battles. So yeah, and be sure to stay tuned till the end of the video as I will show you the images of what he has made and I will also leave a link in the description down below to the video and the terrain that he is building also. So stay tuned till the end and be sure to check out his channel and give him my compliments. Alright, so without further ado, I would say follow me to the crafting table and let's do this! Alright my friends, let's get this challenge on the way! All right, we're gonna begin with removing the battery clip here in the back and I'm gonna be taking a small screwdriver because this thing has millions of screws so I'm gonna be having fun with this for a little while. <laughs> and another one here and plenty more to come after that. I'm gonna remove the lid and be careful not to impale yourself on this iron wire. I mean we are building a chaos infused generator but that does not mean we have to cover it with real blood so be careful guys. <laughs> Alright now there are so many electronic goodies in this thing and I first wanted to snip the wires but I can just unplug them so that went easier. Here you can see more screws and more screws. Just unscrew them all. <laughs> Put aside any things that you might think that were interesting and I, uh, with this I'm definitely keeping the speakers. This will be the base for my generator. But first I have to unscrew them. So alright, so this looks like a good place to start. I'm gonna glue these two things together probably. Well, I will eventually. Now this thing here, I wanted to make a monitor but I'm end up using only the screen thing but here will be my starting point so I'm gonna remove this thing later now first I thought about building this thing on an extra Necromunda tile but I just set that aside for this uh, old lamp cap I still had laying about from when we were doing renovations in our house so this looked like a better piece for a base and I'm keeping the tile for something else, of course. Now I'm also going to use this cheap knockoff transformer toy. And the legs, uh, the arms would be perfect to hold up my generator. These cheap toys are a great, great find. You can you find them in uh, dollar stores, drift stores. And there's always a good use with those pieces. 
<laughs> look a walking generator <laughs> now i'm using these two pieces of an old hamster tube which i will glue inside of the speakers just to expand on it a little bit more just uh, glue them on and then measure how you want to glue them together <laughs> like so uh, better looks nice just using hot glue for everything here just hold it in place for a little while and it will look like this I'm gonna glue in some round EVA foams inside of the leg so I have a better uh, surface to glue my generator to and again use hot glue it will hold up nicely the speakers aren't that heavy so there's no worry here now I'm gonna glue this to the base with some more hot glue like this looking cool now another piece from the CD player I'm going to use as a power source of my generator and I'm going to glue that in front in position here leaving some of the cables attached to it I will be using a lot of cables in this build as well but they're all ca they all came with the CD player so it was handy just again with hot glue gluing it down to the base and I'm gonna place these uh, two backing cables, I'm gonna place them through the holes in the back of the lamp cap. Like this. Just uh, dry fit them first and when you're happy with the result, just uh, attach a little bit of hot glue to it and then stick them into position. Like this. Cool. Now I'm also, I also have this uh, lamp socket, which I will also use to shove in some more cables. And I'm gonna hot glue that to the base as well. Just cables everywhere. More cables! <laughs> now on top of this uh, power source I have here, I'm gonna also glue on some uh, wooden blocks to cover up the lettering. First I'm gonna attach these cables. And another piece here, hot glue that on. Just go nuts with this. Here you can see me gluing on the wooden blocks as I mentioned. Just have fun with this. You can't go wrong with anything. So here I'm fiddling in with some more cables, attaching them to the legs of the generator with hot glue. A little dollop of hot glue here to hold them to the side. More cables. <laughs> cables everywhere. There's no right or wrong way, just whatever makes, whatever, yeah, whatever makes you think it looks cool. So now I'm going to add some more details to the generator itself by gluing these wooden blocks around the circle in the center. Just going around the entire generator like this. Mo another coffee cup uh, lid. I love those things. Now I'm going to create some piping with paper drinking straws. Um, I'm gonna be gluing some more EVA uh, foam circles on top of the wooden blocks of my generator. And here are the pipes. I know I'm going really fast, but there's, yeah, there's not really any detailed explanation on how to do this. Just have fun with it. Just let your mind take you to the place you want to go. <laughs> Some cardboard tubes, some more uh, offcuts of uh, the drinking straws. Just attach them as you see fit. Here my son is helping me. <laughs> I'm adding some uh, small stairs to the base as well. If you want to know how I made those stairs, check out my uh, Necromunda series stairs video, episode 5. I go into uh, detail how I make these stairs. Now once they are done, I just simply glue them to the base. And we're starting to get somewhere. Uh, also, as this is for my Necromunda series, I wanted some more pipelines, so I took this thing and hot glued uh, another EVA foam for better contact. And these uh, tubes, you've seen me use them before. I'm gonna attach them to the side. Again with hot glue, to the side of the lamp cap. And it will 
look like this by now. Now I'm using this piece as I mentioned in the beginning, so I'm going to create a computer console which I uh, will hot glue to the lamp cap and I'm going to attach uh, also some foam board underneath for some type of keyboard. But first adding more cables. <laughs> In hindsight, I maybe went a little overboard with the cables, but the end result looks cool, so I'm happy with it. Here I'm gluing the foam board piece underneath my keyboard. Yeah, so far it looks cool. Now I spray painted everything black, but I'm not done adding details to the piece yet. Now I have this plastic toy, I think it was a dog's frisbee, and I'm using this to, as the base for my chaos icon. So first I dry fit it and then I mark out where I'm uh, going to saw it in, uh, in half. So I mark this out with a pen. Um, with my hobby saw I'm simply sawing through the plastic frisbee where I've marked out uh, the lines and I'm using this plastic skull as a Hall this, uh, Halloween decoration plastic skull. And it will look nice with this piece as it is a chaos infused generator. And I'm gonna hot glue the skull on top of uh, the frisbee. <laughs> I'm gonna draw some chaos arrows on foam board and I'm gonna cut them out. But uh, be sure to dry fit them first. Now I know that it is eight points, but I'm using only five here. I didn't want to go around the generator. But well, you get the idea. You've seen the finished piece, so. <laughs> Now we'll go around like this. I'm gonna glue on the, the skull on top. And uh, I'm gonna glue one of the arrows straight into the base of the skull here. And the other ones will go around the circle. Even with even spaces in between like this. And now with wooden blocks that I glued together, I'm going to create some cogs between the arrows making it look a bit uh, more sector mechanicus but the corrupted sector mechanicus like this and i'm gonna dry fit it first my son approves he's happy <laughs> now i hot glued it into position i'm gonna start by spray painting it first but it's still wet so i'm wearing my gloves here and i'm attaching more pieces to it more cables as I want something that runs from the generator to the skull on top. So this is a piece of an old spray cam. And I glue the cables in between the holes and I'm gonna glue that to the side of the skull. Like this. I hope you're still following me. <laughs> Here I'm gluing this wooden block against the skull as well. And some more details. And as I said, I'm wearing these gloves as uh, some parts were not completely dry yet. This is one of those pieces that I, somebody really had to stop me from, from adding details to it because if I didn't, I still would be putting on details right now. <laughs> it's so fun to create these things and the further you go, the more details you want to add to the piece. But at some point, you just got to stop yourself. <laughs> Because uh, I eventually gonna glue in the back of the skull uh, some tube as well. Here I've glued in a, a, a bead into the eye socket. Now let's paint this piece. And as I said, I did add a tube at the back of the skull running down to the base as an extra detail. And it was a spur of the moment decision, but you will see that later. Now I'm covering this entire piece, my go-to recipe for painting Necromunda. Cover it all in brown once it's all prime black. The entire piece, all brown, and let that dry a little bit. Will look like this. Now with a rusty brown, I'm putting on big splotches everywhere, except on uh, the skull. On one half of the skull, I'm going to leave that as it is. 
because one half of the skull will be a real skull-like and the other half will be a metallic kind of skull. And naturally the metallic kind of skull will be the one where all the cables are attached to. Now I'm going to stipple on metallic silver all over the piece, except, as I mentioned, the side of the skull. Here, if you look closely, you can see the tube running in the back from the skull to the, down to the base. And this is what it looks like now. But I'm not done yet. Now, I cover the semicircle of chaos in a brass color, as I am a huge corn fan in my games. I love the, the brass of corn, so yeah, I want this to be a corn base. Only thing I should have done is add some gore and blood details to it, but I can still go in that and do that later. Now I'm covering this one part of the skull in a bone color, and I'm gonna cover the rim in one of the, in my favorite blue paint, to match my uh, other paints of Necromunda. I hope you're still following me. <laughs> the side of the stairs as well and it's taking shape quite nicely now all the brass parts I'm gonna cover that with nylac oxide just stipple that on and cover it everywhere but not just make sure that the brass still shines through as it is a rather translucent uh, technical paint so you should have no problem with that I want this thing to look old like this Now some more rust effects. Now I'm going to stipple on some brown everywhere I want rust to be. Just lay that thing on thick there. And then I'm doing the same with an orange paint, a bright orange. Well, you've seen me paint Necromunda before. <laughs> now I'm finishing by giving the skull an Agrax Urchate uh, wash, but only the skull. Like this. And as you see, I've put on more rust on the uh, arrows, the chaos icon arrows as well. And on the computer screen, I just stippled on some green lettering. So it looks like this now. And here you can see a clear view of the tube running in the back. So let us have a look at this finished piece, shall we? Here I have set it up to match uh, my other Necromunda terrain. You can see the Corpse Grinders factory in the back, the tiles we've made before. And this is what it looks like when uh, it is implemented with the rest of the terrain. And in my humble opinion, it looks awesome. Can't wait to use this in some games. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. But we are not done with the video just yet. Because I have a few cool things to show you guys. So stick around. Alright everybody, let us have a look and see what Lee is making for the purpose of our terrain challenge. Be sure to check out his channel and his video on how he made his terrain pieces. Link will be posted in the comment section. So here we can see Lee holding up the old vacuum cleaner. We'll turn that into something cool, all the busted up parts from the, the vacuum cleaner. Whoa, look at this man, the satellite dish looks awesome. And the generator, I like the platform, the pipings, the ventilation. That really looks cool. Yeah, you really did a cool job with this man. I love the terrain, it looks fantastic. I wish we could play some games together on this. It would be cool, putting your pieces and my pieces together. Awesome. So I would like to give a very, very special thanks to Lee from Tabletop Skirmish Games for giving me the opportunity to do this challenge with you. It really means a lot and I had loads of fun building this thing. And I really loved what you did with the vacuum cleaner. Some cool stuff you made, man. And to all of you watching, thank you, thank you very much for all your continued support. I love the way my channel is growing. I really didn't expect that. And it's all thanks to all of you watching. I really appreciate all of you. So if you like my Necromunda project, if you like my terrain, stick around because I have loads more to come for both those things. And of course, more battle reports as well. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next run, guys. Bye for now. See ya.